So is the US in trouble? Well, we're about to find out because we are about to see a $1.7 trillion government spending bill for fiscal year 2023. Now, this is a very insane number simply because initially, President Biden, he asked for less than $1.5 trillion. And now we're giving him $1.7 trillion. And again, this is a bipartisan bill. It's not all Democrats. Republicans are voting for this as well. Now, here's the good news. The good news is that lawmakers are working together. This is really good news because now Republicans and Democrats are working hand in hand to put something together for the American people. Awesome. That is great. But here's the concern. The concern is that we are borrowing more money. We're borrowing more money, which is going to put us into a deeper deficit. If you're not sure how much of a deficit we're already in, look at this. Look at this number right here. Let me show you this right here. That's our deficit right there. US national debt, $31.4 trillion. Wow, that's a great number. That'd be great if it's your bank account, not if it's our debt, but again, there it is. Now, I don't wanna bore you with the details of what's currently in this bill because well, I've already done that this week and I don't wanna bore you again. So I want to skip over all the details and let's just get to some, some of the things that are really important that are in this bill. First, there's roughly $45 billion that's going to go to Ukraine and to NATO allies. Now you're probably wondering, we got $31 trillion in debt. Why are we sending more money to Ukraine? Well, the reason why, and initially President Biden, I believe he only asked for $37 trillion, but because this is potentially the, the last time we're gonna send any additional aid to Ukraine. Well, this is why it went up to $45 billion. So just keep that in mind. There's also a bipartisan deal. Here's the big one. It's a bipartisan deal to end a, uh, you know, a, Medicare, a Medicaid policy that was uh, for initially passed under former President Donald Trump when we started talking and dealing with COVID. Well, what this means is on April 1st, 2023, uh, the requirement that states must keep uh, individuals on a federally uh, funded insurance, this ends. So if, if a person does not meet the eligibility requirements, they can ultimately be dropped. And the fact of the matter is that enrollment in Medicaid increased by 30% during this whole enrollment period when uh, we initially were going through this. So now it puts us over 83 million people that are currently enrolled in the program. That is a big concern because if 30%, let's say say 25 million people, I know that's not 30%, but it's pretty close. Let's say 25 million people are just now not getting any insurance. Again, what happens? It's a problem. But again, this is in the bill and it's a bipartisan bill. There's also $8 billion for childcare and development, uh, a it's a block grant. It's a 30% increase in the funding. And the grant actually offers financial assistance to lower income families that can't afford um, any childcare. So that's some good news there. I didn't address this in the last one, but again, talked about here. Here's one that I think is interesting. There is a provision in this bill that directs the US Capitol Police to uh, extend security to a former House speaker for a year after they leave office. Hmm. Who, who do you know that is a former House Speaker that is, has left office in the past year? Well, there's nobody. But who is going to be leaving office this year? Well, it's Nancy Pelosi, the current House Speaker. Hmm. So they're going to extend her security for up to a year. There's also a provision here that leaves it kind of open-ended. So we could continue to pay for her security for the rest of her life, essentially. It also provides $2.5 million for a, a residential security system program for all senators. Okay, interesting. So, you know, right now it's just gonna give uh, more of our lawmakers additional security paid for by us, and we're gonna protect them to go on vacation. All right, wonderful. Let me just throw out my wallet right now, right? Anyway, so that's in there. But here's another thing. 
there's many concerns and I hate <laughs> I hate talking about this. I'm not going to bring up a lot of different examples here because this is going to make a lot of people mad, but there are 16 billion dollars in earmarks. Now, what is an earmark? An earmark is a uh, a certain provision inside the bill that gives uh, individual uh, or senators individual requests to uh, you know, ask for specific items. Well, in this bill, there's more than 14,000 earmarks. Okay, these are line items that are included. You can you can go through this and read it. And and what's interesting about all this, and I'll give you a couple in a second. But what's interesting about all this is that. These are actually needed in order to pass this bill. And they're needed because if a senator isn't getting something for their constituents or you know their state, then what's going to happen is they're more likely than not to say, you know what, I don't like that bill. I'm going to vote no. And so then Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has to come in and be like, you know what, we really need you. Or they get the Appropriations Committee in this and they're like, you know what, we really need you in here. What, what, could, you, what could we give you? where we could change your mind. Well, for example, let's say uh, somebody in here is uh, uh, somebody out of Wisconsin. Um, they're asking, or the senator from Wisconsin is asking for $4 million for the construction of a new food bank. That's in there, that is in there. That will be given to him. What's even more interesting is that Senator Richard Shelby, who's actually retiring from the Senate, he's getting 656 million dollars in appropriations in this new bill 656 million dollars just think about that he's retiring why why i just don't get it but it's in there now what you need to keep in mind again that's all i want to say about the the uh the appropriations that are in there because i know it makes a lot of people mad so i'm not going to address that anymore but the next thing I want to address is why do Democrats feel that they have to push this through? Well, for one, we only have until tomorrow to get this done. As of Friday, uh, December 23rd, if this is not passed by the end of the day, then the government would shut down on Christmas Eve. That's not what we want. But the other reason why Democrats have to get this through is because many are actually worried that they're going to lose all their leverage this next year if they don't get something done. And you're probably wondering, well, how would they lose all their leverage? Well, it's actually pretty simple. They're going to lose their leverage because they're not going to have control of the House of Representatives, which means trying to get something passed is going to be next to impossible for Democrats and for Republicans, unless it's a bipartisan bill. The other thing is that they are, they are now noticing that it is likely going to be the end of the public health emergency, which means that we are going to see limited powers for the Biden administration. This is why they're trying to push things through now because once the public health emergency ends, a lot of their powers go away. So this is what we're hearing, that Democrats are trying to do all they can to get as much into this bill as possible, but the issue now is the Senate's already passed it. Uh, as of making this, the House hasn't passed it yet, but my guess is within the next handful of hours, it will be passed anyway. So. That's what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise, I'll come back on and share all latest news and updates. But this is concerning. This is concerning because now we have a, another $1.7 trillion that we're adding on. And again, it puts us in trouble, not just because we're going deeper into debt, but because now we're cutting some programs, such as Medicaid, right? Very concerning. But then the amount of additional relief that is coming in exchange is very small. But again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Subscribe so you never miss an update, and I'll see you guys on the next one.